Hello students, I expect that you are doing well. Today with this video, I'm going to show you how to model a tubular reactor using Comsol Multiphysics. In this tubular reactor, we are going to have an inlet stream of propylene oxide that is going to be our reactant A, and the reactant B is going to be water. And they are going to be used to form propylene glycol that is going to be the product C. We are considering that this is an exothermic reaction and that it follows a first order reaction kinetics, okay? The dimensions of this reaction system are going to be one meter in length in a, in a diameter of 0 0.2 meters, okay? So we are going to consider that at the inlet we are going to have to separate feed streams. The first stream is going to be composed of propylene oxide and methanol. And we are considering that the molar feed rate is going to be 0 0.1 mole per second of propylene oxide. For the second stream, we are going to have a solution of a sulfuric acid at 1% uh, in weight in water, okay? And we are going to say that the volumetric flow rate of this second stream is going to be 2.5 times the volumetric flow rate of the first stream. Uh, when we mix these both streams, we're going to observe an increase in the temperature because of the heat of mixing. And we're considering that the inlet stream is at a temperature of 312 Kelvin. Um, later, we are given with the information regarding the reaction rate law. As I told you before, we know that the, that the reaction follows a kinetics of first order respect to the concentration of species A. And we are also given with the activation energy and the pre-exponential factor A. So we already know as well what is the reference value for the rate constant, K0, that is given as 1.28 hour to the minus one. This is given at a temperature of reference of 300 Kelvin. So if we want to know how this uh, K value is changing as a function of time, we are going to apply this uh, equation that we already review in class. So we are also considering that the thermal conductivity of the reaction mixture is going to be kept essentially constant in all of the domain in, the, in, the, in this uh, reaction domain and we are taking a value of 0 0.599 watts per meter Kelvin. We are also given with the diffusivity for all of these species, and we are going to take this diffusivity as 10 to the minus nine. As we are also uh, considering a cooling jacket around the reaction system, we are going to take into account that this overall heat transfer coefficient has a value of 100 uh, of 1,300 watts per square meter Kelvin. Uh, we also need to know what is the inlet temperature of the cooling jacket, and we are going to set this value as 273 Kelvin. Regarding the properties of all of the species that we are going to be working with, we are given with the molar weight, the density, the heat capacity, and the heat of formation of all of the species. These species are going to be propylene oxide, methanol, water, and propylene glycol. So all of this information has to be fit to the simulator. The objectives that we want to achieve with uh, this tutorial or uh, this uh, practice is going to be, firstly, to computational model and simulate a steady state turbular reactor by specifying the energy and mole balances in the reactor domain. Later, we want to specify a 2D axisymmetric simulation model for the transport of diluted species and heat transfer in a tubular reactor. And finally, we want to determine the species concentration, the conversion and temperature distribution in the reactor domain. The interfaces or physics that we are going to be using in COMSOL are going to be transport of diluted species, assuming that the concentration of uh, the reactance is going to be relatively low. Later, we are also going to apply the heat transfer in fluids module, or f interface, I mean, and the coefficient form PDE. 
In this case, the coefficient form PDE is, if, is from the mathematical tools of COMSOL and is used when we don't have available uh, the equations in another interface. Uh, the mole balance for species A that we are going to apply is going to follow this general uh, form and tell us how the concentration is changing as a function of space. Uh, we are also given with the, uh, with the profile and the velocity. In this case, we are going to be working with a laminar profile. So we can see that the velocity is going to be changing as a function of the radius. In the case that we were using a plug flow profile, we can use only this homogeneous velocity profile. But for this specific example, we're going to use uh, laminar flow. For the energy balance that we are going to apply inside the reactor domain, we are going to follow this, this uh, differential equation that it tells you how the temperature is going to be changing as a function of space. And we are considering here the, the heat of reaction that is going to be produced because of the reaction that is happening inside the reactor. And finally, we are going to have uh, this balance equation, uh, energy balance equation, that is going to be considered for the cooling jacket. Okay? So we want this to be very similar to this. In this case, we can consider that we are not going to have coefficients EA, DA, C, alpha, gamma, and A. All of these coefficients are going to be equal to zero because we don't have a differential of a temperature J, Tj, as a function of time. And we are not going to have either, for example, something that is multiplying to the temperature only here, for the temperature J here. So we are considering all or we are only going to consider that we have the change of the temperature of the coolant respect to space. This will be something similar to this. This is the gradient of Tj respect to space. Okay? So this coefficient is going to be very similar to beta here. But beta only corresponding to the C axis. Okay? So Bc is going to be equal to MC CPC, okay? And this term that we have here can be very similar to this independent term F, okay? So F is the source term and can be equal to this. All of, all of the other terms are going to be equal to zero, okay? The geometry that we are going to create here is going, we are going to depart from a 2D sketch and we are going to rotate this, uh, uh, this geometry in order to obtain a 3D object. The dimensions of the geometry were already specified in the first slides of this presentation and are going to be one meter in length in a diameter of 0 0.1 meter. At the end, we are going to obtain some plot similar to this one. This one is presenting or is showing the concentration distribution inside the reaction domain and this one is, is, is showing the temperature distribution inside the, the reaction domain. And this is very, very similar, but it's a 2D sketch or surface plot that are showing the temperature and the conversion as well. And finally, we are presenting or we are going to be able to determine these plots. So they are 1D plots. And in this case, we are plotting how the temperature is changing as a function of the radius inside the reactor. And this first line is presenting how the temperature uh, is changing uh, in the inlet. We can see that in the inlet it is going to be constant, the temperature, but later this line is showing how the temperature is changing half, uh, halfway the reactor, okay? Half axial location. And finally, this, this third line, it is the change in the temperature as a function of the location, but at the outlet of the reactor. In the same way, we are presenting the conversion uh, in the different points in the reactor. For example, this is the conversion at the inlet, the conversion halfway, and the conversion at the outlet of the reactor. 
and we are going to get a plot similar to this in which we are presenting the distribution of the temperature inside the cooling jacket. Some of the equations that we are going to be using in this uh, model are given here. For example, I already told you that this is the uh, velocity profile as a function of the radius and we know how to calculate the velocity. In general, you know that the velocity can be given as the ratio between the volumetric flow rate and the area of the reactor. And later we have here the total volume flow rate that is going to be the initial volume flow rate is going to be equal to the volume flow rate of water, the volume flow rate of propylene oxide and the volume flow rate of methanol. The conversion, you know that by definition the conversion it is the ratio between the uh, concentration that has already been consumed respect to the concentration that it is given at the beginning of the reaction. And if you want to know what is the concentration of a species B and C in any point of the reactor, you can use these expressions here. This is the initial concentration of reactant B minus the consumption. And this is going to tell you how the species C is being produced as a function of the conversion of A. We also know that the rate of reaction expression it is given as a function of concentration and is of order one. And uh, we know that K is going to be modeled by the Arrhenius equation. And later we have the heat production term. The heat production term is going to be given by the heat of reaction multiplied by the rate of reaction at any point. And we also know that we are going to use a lot of parameters regarding the properties of the uh, the properties of the of the species. So I'm letting you to know all of these values here. We are also be going to be we are also going to be using uh, some variables inside the the simulator. And I'm giving you this, uh, this link. You are going to be able to download a file with these uh, equations. And we are going to use this file in order to uh, specify the, the simulation model. Later, we are going also to use these parameters. And these parameters are available as well in the COMSOL Multiphysics web page. And we are also going to be feeding this information in COMSOL. So this uh, tutorial or this model is obtained from the console application gallery and you can uh, review a little bit about this model uh, following this link. Uh, this uh, exercise is also uh, featured in the Fogler book, Elements of Chemical Reaction Engineering, and you can go to this page in order to review a little bit more, a, a little bit more about this model. So we're going to continue in COMSOL Multiphysics. Okay, the first window that you will see when you open uh, COMSOL Multiphysics will be something like this. Okay, that is called new and you have two different options. The version that I'm using is the one for Windows and it's console 5.6. But in general, you're going to see a similar interface whether you're using PC or Mac. Uh, the steps that we are going to follow are the same for both PC or Mac. So uh, we are going to click the model wizard. The model wizard is going to guide you through the first steps uh, for defining your simulation. And in the one in black, blank model, uh, you have to begin everything from, from scratch. So I'm going to begin with model wizard. And here you have different options for the space dimension. Your simulation can be 0D, 1D, 2D, 3D. Uh, in, the, in this case, I'm going to select 2D axisymmetric. In the case of 2D axisymmetric, you are going to begin from a 2D sketch and you are going to, uh, to, to, are going to obtain a 3D object from this 2D sketch. So I'm going to select this one. 
and in this window I have to select the physics or the modules that I want to use for my simulation. Uh, in this case I'm going to look for chemical species transport that is going to model how the concentration profile or the concentration distribution is going to be within the computational domain or the geometry. So I'm going to expand chemical transport chemical species transport and I'm going to select transport of diluted species. We are assuming in this case that the concentration is relatively uh, low. Uh, when I click add here the physics interfaces are going to be added in this box and you can see here the dependent variables for uh, the names of the dependent variables. So by default console is using the variable C but I'm going to write CA okay and maybe if you have more species you can add uh, all the other species here I'm just going to add CA uh, later I'm going to select the heat transferring fluids interface and I'm going down here and I will find heat transferring fluids and I will click add in this case, uh, we are going to leave it as default with the temperature variable T, okay? And this is going to generate or calculate the, the energy balance in the, um, in the domain of the reactor. Later, I will need to add a mathematics interface that is going to call, uh, is going to be called coefficient form PDE. So I'm going to expand the mathematics node and later the PDE interfaces and finally the lower dimensions. In the lower dimensions I'm going to select coefficient form PDE. Okay, This is going to allow me to add the energy balance for the cooling jacket of the reactor. In the field name for the dependent variables I'm going to change it to TJ and the number of the name of the dependent variable is going to be TJ as well okay and I have to specify what are the units for the dependent variable quantity and for the source term of this differential equation in this case I'm going to specify that the units of the dependent variable is going to be temperature I mean it's going to be a Kelvin because we have temperature so I'm going to click here select dependent variable quantity and I'm going to type for temperature and I'm going to click filter here and I, here I will select temperature okay in the source term the units must be watts per meter so I'm going to change the name here and this is going to be a custom unit and is okay I have to change here my keyboard uh, this is watt per meter okay and I think that's all for the moment so later when I finish adding these interfaces I'm going to click study and from study uh, I will select stationary so we are going to simulate a, a steady state process okay the other the other option that you have is time dependent. So I'm going to select stationary and I'm going to, I'm going to click down here. Okay, I'm going to say no that I don't want to ch uh, to save the previous changes. Okay, and here you have the main window for console. Okay, in the main window you are going to have three different sections or four different sections. The first section that you will have are the menus or the ribbons that you have here. And here in the left part of the screen, you have the model bu builder. In the model builder, you're going to be defining your simulation model, okay? And it's preferably for you to begin from the top to the bottom specifying and adding the new nodes that you will need according to your model. In the center of the screen you are going to have the settings window and 
once you click here in the different nodes this settings window is going to be changing okay and here is where you're going to be defining the properties for every uh, for every node and later you will have the graphics windows window in which you are going to have your sketch your geometry and you will be able to select the different domains and boundaries from directly from this screen and I'm missing something here that is a message uh, or the control message sender in which you're going to have different messages from the software or maybe you can review the progress of your simulation and obtain different results in the tables okay so I'm going to begin by defining the geometry that we need and here in geometry you will see that you are required to specify what are the units of length that, ya that you are going to use uh, by this time we're going to leave it as default with meters but you can change it to any other uh, unit that you will need okay uh, in the same way you have angular units and you can change from degrees to radians uh, I'm going to leave it as default uh, to add a new geometry here or a new shape you can right click on geometry node and you will obtain these different options in the same way you can go to geometry and here you have the same options as well so I'm going to right click geometry and I'm going to select the rectangle in the geometry that I show you in the previous uh, slides uh, we know that the width for this rectangle is going to be 0 0.1 and the height is going to be 1 meter so we can click build all objects and we will have this uh, geometry here okay so you can see here that we have a dashed line so this dashed line represents the symmetry axis and around this axis the the geometry is going to be uh, revolu revoluted or com yeah it's going to be rotated and we are going to obtain uh, uh, a 3d object from a 2d sketch okay later we will need different parameters we will need different variables and we are going to add them as a group uh, in order to use them later in the model okay so we are going here to global definitions and we're going to locate the parameters node in the parameters node you are going to be able to type the name of the different variables that you will need and what is the value or expression that represents these parameters but in this case we already have a file a text file that you can upload here directly and you will then obtain a complete table with all of this data that you will need okay so I'm going to click here load from file and I already already have it in my files so there is a file that is called tubular reactor parameters you are going to have these uh, documents or files available for you uh, I'm going to click open and as you can see we already have all of the values that I showed you in the presentation you have them here okay for example here is the value for the activation energy that is called E and the value that it has and if you can see as well you have the units in brackets and this helps a, a lot to the software for the software to keep a consistency in the units within the model okay so if the software requires any uh, any conversion is going to perform it automatically okay here we also have the frequency factor thermal conductivity etc and maybe you can see that some parameters are calculated from the values from other given parameters for example here we have the heat capacity at the inlet that is taken as an operation here okay and maybe if you want you can review it later for you to understand what is uh, any individual uh, variable that is given here or any individual parameter uh, later I'm going to add the variables the variables are going to be added here component one later you go to definitions and I'm going to right click on definitions okay 
and I'm going to add variables. In variables, I, we also have a file. I'm going to click here in load from file, and later I'm going to select tubular reactor variables. Okay, and what the software is going to be calculated here is going to be the average flow rate. Okay, that is going to be like like the velocity. If you can see here, you have meters per second. And it's going to be equal to the volumetric flow rate divided by the area of the, of the tube. In the similar way, we have here the value for the laminar floor profile or the velocity profile that is going to be laminar. And it is taken in this form as a function of the radius. Okay? Here we are given also with the conversion of species A that you know that this is going to be equal to the initial concentration minus the concentration at any point of the process respect to the initial concentration. And you can also calculate what is the concentration of B and the concentration of, uh, of C in, uh, as a function of the conversion. Remember that the concentration of A is going to be calculated by the module of transport of diluted species. Okay, so later you have reaction rate, um, heat production term. This heat production is the heat that is going to be produced once the reaction is happening inside the, the reactor domain. And later you have the specific heat of the mixture. Once the concentration is going to be changing, the a specific heat of the mixture is going to be changing as well. Okay, I think that we are done with this and we can continue with the definition of the different interfaces. So I'm going to locate uh, a transport of the loaded species here. Okay, so if you want to know what are the equations that are working for every interface you can expand this tab equation and you will see the general equation here okay uh, if you want to know what is the name of the dependent variables that you are using of you want to change them you can do it here in the dependent variables here you have ca and maybe you can add other ones okay this uh, window is okay so we are going to change to transport properties one okay in the first part, in the first section, you have domain selection. And you are going to see which are the domains on which this equation is uh, working. So we only have one domain, and this uh, module is working on this uh, domain. Later, we have the convection section. And this means that if we want a velocity field, we are going to be able to specify where uh, how this velocity field is uh, working here in this domain. So we must be able, as we are working with a 2D, um, with a 2D uh, mo model, so we will need to specify the velocity in the direction of the radius and the velocity in the direction of C, okay? So we know that the movement of the fluid is going to be exclusively on the C axis. So I'm going to leave R as zero and I'm have, I have to specify the velocity on C. And if you remember from here, I think that it was variables, uh, you have the laminar flow profile, okay? And we have that the variable is UZ. So I'm coming back to transport properties and I'm going to write UC how the uh, this is how the fluid is moving along the seat axis and remember that this is going to depend on the radius because it is a laminar flow profile okay uh, what else here you have diffusion the diffusion section uh, i'm not going to change anything but the diffusion coefficient and the diffusion diffusion coefficient I have it in the parameters one, and it's called diff. This is the diffusion coefficient for all of the uh, species that are inside the reactor. Uh, we're assuming that we have this value, and I'm coming back to transport properties, and I'm going to type diff, okay? 
uh, I think that's all for this window this window and I'm coming back I'm coming to this actual symmetry this is given by default and it tells you what is going to be the axis of symmetry okay we already know that is this part no flux I'm going to leave it that way maybe this is going to be changing according to you your progress in the definition of the problem the initial values okay here you have to give the initial values uh, maybe you can leave it that way but uh, I'm going to go to parameters one and I think there is um, initial concentration of A okay here we have propylene oxide concentration uh, at the inlet okay maybe I can use this this value as well here but it shouldn't make any difference if you if you specify or not CA0 okay later we will need some boundary conditions in the case of the boundary conditions uh, I have to add them in this node I'm going to right click on transport of the little species and I have to specify the concentration okay and I have to specify the concentration at the inlet of the reactor the bottom side is going to be the uh, inlet and I'm going to specify this boundary that is boundary number two okay and I'm going to specify the concentration of species A and remember that this is CA0 this is the variable that we are using CA0 okay and if I if I specify the inlet boundary condition I have to specify the outlet boundary condition so I'm going to add transport of the little species I'm going to add right click on it and I will have outflow okay and in the case of the outflow it means that the transport of the species is going to be exclusively driven by the convection okay so I'm going to click here and we have selected the boundary number three okay okay let me verify if I need another one uh, I think that okay yeah I have to add the um, a reaction okay how the species A is being changing in this domain given to the production or I mean the consumption of species A so I have to add a reaction and I'm going to do it here from transport of the little species right click on it and reactions okay and I'm going to select reactions and here in reactions you are required to select what is the domain in which this is going to be working that is domain number one and we are going to define the reaction rate and the reaction rate I think that is given here maybe in variables reaction rate it is called RA and it's a function it is a function of the temperature a function of the concentration because it is a first order respect to the concentration and we have also the variables of uh, the per exponential factor and the energy of activation so I'm going back to reactions and I'm going to type RA okay later I think that's all for this for this module okay so I'm moving to heat transferring fluids you can watch here the what is the dependent variable T and the equation that is going to be solved for this domain and I'm locating on the fluids node and here you also have to well you further select what is the domain it is predefined as one and the heat in the heat convection you have to define as well the velocity profile okay so I'm going to specify you see here in the C axis okay and we don't expect to have movement along the in the radial direction okay and later we have heat conduction of the fluid and we have the thermal conductivity 
Here in the thermal conductivity, we're also given with the information. I'm going to parameters, and we have thermal conductivity. Okay, so I'm going to use the variable Ke, and I'm going to I'm going back to fluid one, uh, thermal conductivity, user defined, and I'm going to type Ke. Okay, in units of watt per meter kelvin. Later, you have thermodynamic fluid or the fluid thermodynamics I mean and we have fluid type you can select from ideal gas or gas liquid in this case we have a liquid and I'm going to select this option and later you have to select what is the density and I'm going to call uh, user define uh, in the heat capacity, well, here I have to define the variable. I'm going back to parameters and I'm going to review what is the density that I must use here. Uh, I think that here I must use rho. Okay, yes, it's going to be rho zero. Uh, here I have fluid one and this is going to be rho zero. In the case of the heat capacity, in the heat capacity at constant pressure, I'm going to select user defined, and there is one that is called CPM, okay? I'm going back here, parameters one, and I'm going to look for CPM. Okay, here we have CPM, it is a mixture specific heat, the specific heat of the mixture, okay? And we are going to use this one here in initial bulk, uh, in fluid one, I mean. And later, we are going to specify the ratio of a specific heat, okay? And the ratio of, of a specific kit, I'm going to select user defined and I'm going to leave, leave it as default as one. Okay. Later, you can see here that you have initial values one. Uh, in the initial values, I'm going to type T0. Okay. And it's going to be working in all of the domain the actual symmetry, thermal insulation. Okay, I'm not going to change anything to these nodes, but I'm going to specify the inlet boundary conditions, okay? In the inlet boundary conditions, I'm going to select temperature, and I'm going to click in this boundary number two, and I'm going to specify the inlet temperature T0, okay? In the same way, I have to specify the outflow condition. I'm going to right click here, and I'm going to select um, flow conditions and outflow, okay? And I'm going to select this one that is called the boundary number three, right? Uh, later, I'm going to right click here and I'm going to select one that is called heat flux, okay? Remember that with this node or that with this uh, interface we are dealing with the change in the energy of the system or the change of the temperature of the system okay and everything that contributes to this change in the energy we have to add it here so remember that we have a cooling jacket around the reactor so we have to model this heat exchange and the way in which you are going to do this it is going to be by defining a heat flux okay around or along this line that is going to be the outer surface of the reactor yes so what I'm doing here in this case it is to 
type here the expression that represents this heat exchange, this heat flux. And in the case of general inward heat flux, I'm going to type minus UK. This UK represents the overall heat transfer coefficient. Okay, when the internal fluid and the cooling fluid is, are exchanging heat. And the temperature difference is going to be T minus Tj. Okay, this equation is going to be working on this boundary, then boundary number four. Okay. So this represents how many heat is being exchanged from the inner fluid to the external fluid. And there is another contribution for this change in the energy of the system. And it's going to be the energy that is required by the reaction or the energy of reaction. And it's not precisely the energy that is required by the reaction. It's, in other words, the, the heat that is being produced by the reaction because it is an exothermal reaction. So I'm going to right click on heat transferring fluids and I'm going to select um, heat source. Okay, the right one is heat source. It is a heat, uh, source of heat. So this source of heat is going to be produced in all of this domain okay the domain number one and the variable for this is going to be q i'm going to look at here i think it's variables and we have heat production term okay and you know that th this is going to be a function of the velocity of reaction and the heat of reaction okay and of course the heat of reaction is being calculated in the parameter section. Let's look for it. Heat of reaction. Oh, here you have it. It is already given as a, as a constant number. Okay? So I'm coming back to heat source 1 and I'm going to type Q. This is a quantity of heat that is uh, being produced in watts per cubic meter. Uh, what else? I think that for this interface it is done, I expect. Um, outflow, I already have the outflow. That's all. Okay, so we are moving to the differential equation in the coefficient form boundary differential equation. And I'm going to start defining it here. Uh, this equation is going to be applied exclusively on the interface between the cooling jacket and the reactor. So this is going to be applying on the four and the boundary number four. Okay, the dependent variable was Tj. That this is going to represent the temperature of the coolant. And we are going to go to coefficient form PDE one. And here we have to define the equation that is going to be applying. So I'm coming back here to the presentation and I'm going to locate this, okay? The equation that we want to use or introduce, this is the energy balance for the coolant fluid, okay? And we know that we need to enter these terms, but we want this equation to be very similar to the general coefficient form PDE equation, okay? So we are going to identify that, for example, this is a, a gradient of the temperature of J respect to C, okay? This, is, this term is going to be very similar to this one here because we have the gradient of the, independent, of the dependent variable respect to the space. And here is given respect to the, spa the spatial coordinate Z, okay? it is not dependent on the uh, coordinate R, the radius, okay? So this term here, it is going to be very similar to beta, okay? So we know that beta in the coordinate C is going to be uh, to MC, CPC, okay? Later, this term here, it is not multiplied by any gradient, 
okay we don't have a multiplication by the gradient of tj so this can be a source term similar to this one that is free or independent okay so this f is going to be equal to this expression here and all of the other terms are going to be equal to zero because we don't have any expression that is uh, multiplying by the gradients in this case a gradient of the time or a gradient respect to the space so we are going to introduce here all of these uh, constants or all of these uh, coefficients are going to be equal to zero and these ones are going to be equal to these expressions so c is going to be zero a is going to be zero one uh, f is going to have a value and this value is going to be two product it's going to be multiplied by pi multiplied by the radius times the uk that is it is the overall heat transfer coefficient i think that you already know what is the overall heat transfer coefficient and this is multiplied by t minus tj and we have the mass coefficient that is going to be zero as well the damping or mass coefficient is going to be zero as well uh here is going to be zero beta okay beta here you can see that you have two different fields that you must uh, complete okay i told you that the mc cpc coefficient it is calc uh, it is multiplying only to the to the component c okay of the equation so we are going to leave r as zero and here i'm going to specify m c i think that this is going to be m c i'm going to verify it in a minute and this is going to apply to c p c okay so c p c okay yes i'm going to look here parameters one m c mc is a mass flow rate of the cooling fluid okay i'm correct here and the cpc i'm going to look in the variables cpm i think this is not the one i'm coming back to parameters cpc this is the heat capacity of the cooling fluid okay but it is given with a capital letter cpc so i'm coming back to coefficient form pde and we have cpc okay it is not given in yellow anymore okay so that's all here for this equation so if you can see here you are taking t that it is the temperature of the mixture inside the reactor so what the software is going to be doing is to couple all of the equations and variables that you have and it's going to be taking the value for the temperature at any given moment or any given point and it's going to couple with this part with the coefficient form pde interface okay so it's going to be taking the different values that the temperature is of the mixture is taking and it's going to be calculating this okay in the same way here in the heat flux you have this uh, exchange expression the heat exchange expression here that is going to be using the variable tj and the variable tj is going to be calculated by this interface so all of the system is being coupled here right um what else I think that I have to define some boundary conditions here and I think that the boundary conditions that I'm missing it is going to be I'm going to right click on coefficient form PDE and I have direct leg boundary condition I'm going to select this point because by this point is going to be entering the the, the coolant 
and I have to specify what is the initial value for Tj that is going to be Ta0 okay that is the uh, temperature of the inlet at the inlet of the jacket okay in this case I don't need to specify what is the outflow boundary condition here so I think that we are done with this model I expect that everything is already defined and later I have to create the mesh here okay so what we are doing to the, with the mesh is to specify what is the discretization for this domain. So we have to divide this domain in multiple points in order to solve the differential equations of this problem. Uh, so I'm going here to mesh and I'm going to click map, okay? And later here we have a new node that is called mapped and I'm going to right click on it and select distribution. Okay. In distribution, I'm going to select. Okay. In distribution, I have to select the boundaries. I'm going to select this boundary three and the boundary two. Okay. In distribution type, I have to select predefined. And the number of elements, I'm going to type 50. And the element ratio is going to be 0 0.01. In the growth formula, I'm going to select geometric sequence. Okay, and I'm going to select reverse direction. Okay, later, I'm going to right click on map one and I'm going to select distribution as well. But now I'm going to select this one and this one, the fourth. So I'm going to select the boundary one and four. And in distribution type, I'm going to select predefined, but here in the number of elements, I'm going to type 200. In the element ratio, I'm going to type 0 0.01. In growth formula, I'm going to select geometric sequence and reverse direction. And I'm coming back to mesh, and I'm going to click build mesh. And we will end up with something like this, okay, in which in this uh, mesh, the mesh is going to be finer in the inlet and at the walls because we expect that the concentration gradient is going to be higher or more noticeable in these regions. Okay, so in total we have 10,000 domain elements. Okay, it means that we have 10,000 points here for this mesh in this domain yes okay i'm going to save the work uh, this is useful for you not to lose your your work i'm going to call it console reactor and later i'm going here to study okay we already said that we were performing a steady state study okay but I want to add another step. We have a step one, a stationary. I'm going to study here, and I'm going to add a second step. So in the study steps, I'm going to click stationary. And here we have two different uh, steps. You can also add it from here. Study one, study steps, stationary, stationary as well, okay? Uh, why am I doing this? Okay, in this case, I want to run a first step that is not dependent on the temperature. And this is going to allow me to obtain an initial value for the concentration profile or the concentration distribution. Okay, as you can see, we have multiple, or we have three different equations that, I th uh, uh, that are coupled together. Okay, and the solution of this uh, system of equations may be very, very tight, may be very difficult, and sometimes the convergence is not going to be very easy. So what we do here is to run everything with, with only two different equations or without the contribution of the change of temperature, and we will obtain a distribution of concentrations. 
this distribution of concentrations is going to be taken as the initial values for the second step. Now in the second step we will the software we will know the software will know uh, first uh, as initial conditions if you can say this and the convergence is going to be rel relatively faster or better. Okay? So I'm going here to step one stationary and I'm going to deactivate the heat transferring fluids. Yes? And in this case we are considering that the temperature is not changing, that is the temperature is being kept constant. Okay? And in this case I'm going to leave it as default. So now we have already specified all of the uh, all of the things that we needed for for our model simulation model and we are able to run the simulation okay so to do this you can go to, go to a study and click compute and i expect that everything is correct and goes fine okay here we have the first results i expect that everything run well Okay, what we are doing here now is to process the results and we need to do some tables and plots and graphics, okay? So what I'm doing here first is to go here to results and I'm going to add a curl line to D, okay? In the curl line to D, I'm going to select to type here in the R.2. I'm going to type R2 and in the case of additional parallel lines I'm going to type 0 0.5 times the length and 1 times the length and I'm going to click plot what the software is going to do with this is to take the data set that is uh, specifically for these lines okay and later we are going to use this data set in order to create plots specifically for these uh, lines. For example, if I want to know what is the change in the temperature as a function of the radius, I'm going to use this data set and it's going to tell me this information for the inlet, for the middle half, for the halfway of the reactor and for the outlet of the reactor. Okay, you are going to see later what we are going to obtain from this. And I'm going to more data sets as well in results. And I'm going to add um, mirror 2D. Here in 2D data sets, please click mirror 2D. Remember that all of these options that you have here, you can find them in right clicking uh, a right click here in data sets. And here you have all of this information. And uh, you have a uh, code line 2D and more data sets you can find the mirror uh, maybe the mirror is in another place okay more to the data sets mirror to the okay okay let's continue with this mirror and we are going to use it as default okay now what we need to do here is to plot what I was telling you uh, how the temperature and the concentration is changing in as a function of the radius okay to do this I'm going here to results and I'm going to click 1d plot group okay uh, in this case, I'm going to activate this x, y, x axis label and I'm going to type radius location in meters. Okay, and here I'm going to type concentration. Well, I'm going to type temperature in Kelvin, okay? 
maybe you can add a title here this is going to be the title that you want and we can change it here from title type to manual and this is going to be the temperature distribution uh, temperature radial distribution okay uh, I'm going to right click here and I'm going to select line graph okay so I'm coming back here to 1D plot group and from the data set I'm going to change it to call line 2D to take the, da the data value from this data set call line 2D okay uh, what else I think that I'm coming here to line graph and we have this uh, here I'm going to change the data for the y-axis I'm going to change it to temperature okay and I'm going to change it here temperature and plot okay uh, maybe I can change the coloring style I'm going to line graph 1 coloring and style and in line I'm going to select cycle and color I'm going to select black okay and now we have this and in the legends I want to show the legends okay but I don't want these legends I need the legends to be uh, this legends okay okay the legends I'm going to change them here uh, line graph one okay legends automatic I'm going to change it to manual and I want to change the legends here uh, I'm going to the presentation to remember what were the legends and it is inlet axial half axial location and outlet this is going to be inlet half actual location and outlet okay and I want to locate it in this zone here so I'm coming here to 1d plot group 6 in legend I'm going to, ch to change the position and it's going to be lower left okay I'm going to change here the name of this uh, group of plots and I'm going to call it here in 1D plot group 6 locate the label part and I'm going to call it radial temperature profiles okay and here we already have these names uh, I mean I think that oh yes I'm going to call it here temperature 1 temperature 1D so we are going to copy this we're going to create a duplicate I'm going to right click on temperature 1D and click duplicate but now I want to have a plot that is called conversion 1D okay and this title for this plot is going to be similarly to this one here okay radial conversion profiles so this is going to be radial conversion profiles but we got we have to change the definition for I'm going to expand conversion 1d I'm going to expand conversion 1d line graph and here we can see that we are plotting the uh, the temperature so I'm going to replace this expression and I'm going to look for the conversion that is the finance XA okay so we already have this the legends are going to be the same and I'm going to plot here okay I want to change the location of this lane so I'm going back to conversion 1d 
I'm going to locate uh, legend and this is going to be upper left okay something like that so you can see here how the conversion is changing as a function of the radius okay in different points in the inlet half axial location and at the outlet uh, here I have to change the label to change the name of the label label is going to be here and I'm going to call it conversion and plot okay now you can see you can see here this okay now we have these plots that are 1d plots and now we want to obtain some surface plots regarding the conversion I think this is going to be similar to this regarding the temperature and the conversion so to do this I'm going to create here in results a 2d plot group okay and this 2d plot group I think that we have to call it let me see okay we're going to call it temperature mirror okay in the title here I'm going to call it title type manual temperature surface okay and I think that's all in the data set I'm going to select mirror 2d we are obtaining the data from the mirror 2d data set that we generated okay and later I'm going to right click on temperature mirror and I'm going to select surface okay and here I want to change expression for the temperature okay because I want to uh, I want to plot the temperature right so I think that I'm coming back to here temperature and I must see here plot settings x axis label this is going to be called radial location in meters and in y axis label this is going to be actual location in meters and plot okay now you can see that the range that we have for the temperature in this plot is going to be to 280 to almost 350 this is the radial location and this is the actual location and these colors represent the temperature distribution inside the reactor okay you can see that you have here the inlet temperature you can see here that the walls are a little bit lower in temperature because of the cooling jacket and here we have a higher temperature because of the reaction that is an exothermic reaction okay but in general is being cooled cooled down by the jacket uh, I'm going to copy this or duplicate this uh, plot in order to generate the similar surface plot but for the conversion so I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to click duplicate I'm going to call this conversion mirror I'm going to change here conversion surface and I have to change the variable that we are plotting okay so you can write everything that anything that you want for example you can plot the, the concentration or directly the conversion okay and actually you can change directly the, the, the variable here okay in this way and plot okay so you can see here in this plot that the conversion it is higher in these zones and you can see that the temperature is similarly higher in these zones here in the blue part the conversion is going to be lower but by the end of the reactor the conversion is going to increase okay so by this point the conversion is almost 100 100 percent okay 
So in this way you can generate these plots. Uh, we are going to modify a, a plot that was generated automatically by the solver and this is going to be this one here, 2D plot group 5. Okay, so here you have the temperature profile of the cooling in, of the cooling coolant fluid in the cooling jacket. Okay, but I want to increase the size of this. I'm going to expand this and I'm going to select line one. In the coloring and style, in the line type, I'm going to select tube, and I'm going to increase this, the radius of this tube up to three. Okay, and I think that this is plot. Okay. Here you have this, a little bit thicker, okay? And this is the temperature distribution uh, of, the, of the coolant. And I'm going to position here, concentration 3DS, 3D, 3D, I mean not 3DS, 3D, Okay, I'm going to position here, I'm going to visualize this, and later I'm coming back to console reactor point MPH root. Okay, and here when you have the thumbnail, you are going to set from graphic windows, you're going to click this button, and it's going to copy this image. Okay, and this is like a cover, something like that and you can set a title here that it, this is going to be tubular reactor made for my design of chemical reactors course at tech okay okay guys well this will be all for this tutorial I expect that this is useful for you and that you can make or follow this, uh, this tutorial for this model of the reactor, okay? See you later in the following, in the next tutorial. Thank you.